Need them in the Cage Warriors at Bantamweight division. And we are underway after a touch of gloves and some hard leg kicks early on there from the crazy horse. Yeah, Dupap is taking the center of the cage here. He's started checking a couple of them now. They're going to get some hands on Reed. Oh, gonna... cheek to the face there from Josh Reed. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a snapping front kick rather than a full on stomping teat, but it was, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good angle to attack from. And he's got his opponent guessing already there, switching up these low and high kicks. Yeah, that's what you've got to do. I mean, you can't, you can't hit the same target area right over and over again against experienced opponents. You've got to start throwing in some feints, making them think it's going elsewhere. But, you know, we've got one of those toe-to-toe -to -toe styles here. We've got the southpaw stance for Depap. Oh, Ooh, that definitely time, landed time, low. Time, time, time. Yeah, you heard the, uh, the pop here. on that one. Go go it Shush. went right into the cup. Shush. And Stay Josh there, Reed sent to a neutral yeah, corner. Aiton de Pop will have five minutes should he choose to use them. And yeah, clean as you like with that one. I mean, I don't think we need the visual. We heard that from uh, from all the way here at cage side. But yeah, I think I'll be hearing that in my sleep tonight. That was uh, that was a pretty shocking one. But you know, no ill intent. And the referee Mark Goddard went over to Josh and said, "Just be careful. These things do happen when you've got the orthodox fighter against the southpaw." Perhaps switching his stance up briefly. Closing distance well and good knees to the body. Reed just looking to reset here. The Belgian again in that southpaw stance, looking for the kick across the midsection and a nice straight left hand. And he's finding his range with that left now, Josh. Well, he's doing enough work with volume as well to keep Reed kind of guessing and keep him at bay a little bit. That was a good uh, good kick, though. Turned him completely. Well, he switched to orthodox there, took the kick and immediately went back. So we wonder how many of those early leg kicks have taken something of a toll on the Belgian here. Reed charging in with big hooks. I mean, both those guys were throwing their combinations and staying in the pocket to keep throwing. Beautiful work. We saw Reed absolutely unload on Nathaniel Wood with those series of huge hooks. Oh, and this is an interesting back take attempt from from Reed here because he's, he's got postural break on the back of the neck, so he was trying to fold the pap all the way over, and the pap actually looked for a knee tap takedown and ended up having to settle in for something a bit more conventional up against the cage. Good work by Reed there to get to his feet. Just skimmed with a knee there on the way up. I mean, knees have been a good weapon for De Pap. As has that left hand straight down the pipe. He's caught Reed a few times, and it's not the most powerful strike in the world, but he's certainly keeping him at bay, keeping him out of that flurrying range that Reed likes so much. He's got a circle here. He can't keep going straight back. Both guys still looking very light on their feet as they trade. Big shots in the center of the cage. I wonder if Reed thought he hurt the pap there for a second. He went to adjust his uh, mouthpiece. Reed with a nice left of his own landing there. He now switches, keeping his opponent guessing with the stances. But the pap with two big shots. Oh, and he may have rocked Reed there. Yeah, definitely caught him unawares. Well, interesting. He stopped to put his own gun shield back in. That could have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, I think Reed, Reed got may have just caught himself a couple of seconds there with the pap stopping to pick his gum shield up. Oh, I wasn't sure. I thought he just kind of stumbled a little bit, but a couple of those short shots may have connected with a bit more power than we thought. Reed getting back into it with another chopping low kick, and business is picking up here in this bantamweight contest. Belgian fighter flurrying now. And if he's seen an opening and has the confidence that he can hurt Reed. Perhaps we're going to start seeing the pap loosen up. He lands another combination of shots there. I just like the volume the pap's throwing. I mean, he's getting inside and he's throwing three, four, five punches. You know, and they're, they're short shots, but they're hitting the target almost every time. Good coverage and defense as well. Reed looking to fire back. A nice inside leg kick there. Kicks have been a good weapon for Reed. Few more cut kicks up on the inside, perhaps. Oh, oh and again, what, 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 hey, Reed. What do you mean? First of all, don't swear. Second of all, it's clearing the balls. Relax. 
Come away from your corner. Well, I think Mark Goddard Come just uh, corner, covered that better than we could. <laughs> well, I think what, what Reed's complaining right about is he Ross. may have thought it hit the it's hip and it was clear across the front, the but, you know, a, a groin guard protrudes from the front of your body, so you catch a, a shin kick clear across do. the front, you'll... You uh, have to think about your techniques now. Be careful throwing inside kicks, you understand? If that happens again, accident or not, I take a point, that's two. Okay, stay there for me, stay there for me. And interesting there, referee Mark okay? Goddard is going to let that one slide and another accidental shot but he's told Josh Reed that if it happens again accident or not he will be taking a point yeah it's uh, it's out of his hands at that point unfortunately oh two nice shots from Reed Reed flowing here the pap striking back yeah but notice how the pap immediately fires back he covers for a second but then he throws back and he throws back in volume it's, it's such a good answer to any time Reed closes the distance. Reed just using his hand to guard against those knees to the body. We saw a few of those land cleanly to the path earlier on, and that was a nice first round, Josh. Yeah, it was a good first round. Tough one to score for the judges as well, I think, because both guys landed with a decent amount of decent amount of volume, decent amount of different target areas and significant strikes. Well, let's take a look back at some of the action from that round. There was that kick and another couple of inches. That might have... Uh, change the game early on another stand-up exchange here both guys flurrying with hooks the pap getting the better of it there josh yeah i, I felt like the pap got the better of quite a few of the situations but so did reed i honestly couldn't uh you know put a put a number on it now i mean this is where the pap looked like he landed repeatedly and that left it looked like he wobbled him and then he lost his footing and then he surprised him again and you know, perhaps, uh, I, I honestly don't know which way I'd go. Yeah, perhaps, uh, perhaps not the wisest move there from the Belgian, but, you know, ifs and buts don't count for much at the end of the day, and we're going to see a second round. And Josh, how much is that going to play into the mindset of Josh Reed now? He, he knows he's going to lose a point, even with an accidental low kick. I think he's going to stop, stop him throwing the Yeah, kicks? I think he's going to stop throwing them. I don't think he can... Well, <laughs> say that, commentator's curse. Um, I think if he throws them, they're going to be below the knee. They're going to be calf, calf kicks. He can't afford to let them ride up high. Of course, he might get the muscle memory and just throw them anyway, but he's got a good guillotine here. Manages to turn the Papa around against the cage. You see, the Papa has to bring both hands in to defend here. This could be very tight. Oh, there you go. Classic defense over the top. Opens up the hips for the takedown attempt. Reed's connected those hands and scoops the hips out from underneath his opponent. Yeah, Depat was looking for a uh, figure four tie, but he's actually isolated his own arm here. And this is dangerous. You see Reed trying to work that wrist grip. He can pop the arm off the hip, get it behind Depat. He's going to start getting a lot more leverage on that rotator cuff. Yeah, we know him as a big puncher and a brawler, but he's got a great ground game as well, as do most of the guys coming out of Abitaleri combat. Going for the straight armbar here is a tough, tough transition to get. Strong guys, you know, they straighten their arm to defend the shoulder lock, and that gives you a, a modified armbar here, but it's very tough to get the bite on the angle just about right, especially against any experienced grappler. Got a lot of teammates on the card tonight. Chris Edwards competing in our main card, and of course the champ Jack Shaw. All these guys have come up together, Josh. They've trained together. They've been like a real family coming out of that gym, and it shows they fought on many of the same cards. So you know, perhaps somewhere at the back of Reed's mind, he's going to want to take that win back into the dressing room. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be fantastic motivation going into uh, certainly his next teammates' fight, Chris Edwards, who's uh, the first up in our main card later. This is good positional maintenance from Reed here. Staying very heavy on top because he's tied up the upper body. That allows him a bit more free movement on his legs. The cage is going to hinder him a little bit, but, but not too much, I would imagine. Not able to clear the half guard there is Reed making slow and steady progress. Yeah, he's working for a far side head and arm choke here. You can see he's trying to get his head to the left side behind the tricep. No good defense from De Pap. And again, as you say, Josh, the cage is going to be helping De Pap here more than Reed, probably, if that is what he's going for. Uh, it might be when they come to dismount that position, yeah. Oh, De Pap merely getting out of the back door there. That would have been the time for Reed to look to, to get the mount, possibly. Got a chance to take mount here. Well, staying content to stay heavy, getting the 
the kind of duration on the board. Stay busy, guys. Referee Mark Goddard just asking for a little bit more progress there. Yeah, and, and, and that's what uh, the referee's going to be looking at. So he wants that pass to mount and immediately he gets it. That's all he had to do. It's easy pass when he actually went for it. And that's due to the amount of control he's doing with the upper body. Let's see what the game plan is now from Reed. Is he going to look to attack that neck again or is he going to look to posture up and land some shots and just wedge his man in against the bottom of the cage there? Yeah, this is where it gets very awkward for Depap with the cage because it's going to help pin his head. And if your head is lifted up off the canvas, you cannot bridge as effectively. And that's really going to be one of your main escapes here is to turn on your side, start creating some frames and bridging and shrimping, we call it, as you move your hips backwards to, to escape. But, you know, if that cage is blocking your head position, it is going to determine how well you can do that. Looks as though Reed was briefly trying to push off the head there to land the slicing elbow strike. Don't forget to join in the conversation on social media. Use the hashtag CW104 at Cage Warriors on social channels. I would really like to see him strike here. I'd really like to see him try and put some damage on the board. Uh, you know, land some very impactful shots with the ground and pound. This is controlling, and there are short shots coming in. And, you know, he's having to do this much control because the Pap's doing a good job in trying to escape. But... You know, at the same time, it's uh, it's a slow progression from Josh Reed. Yeah, perhaps a little bit wary of uh, of getting swept out of that man position. As you say, Josh DePap really hasn't stopped moving from the bottom the entire time that Reed's been on top. So perhaps that's at the back of Reed's mind as he stays close to his man. I mean, it's exactly what you have to do when you are mounted like this. You have to keep moving. If you keep moving, you keep subverting your your opponent's base and they can't really connect to the ground to throw these big thunderous shots. So, you know, it, it's safe. But, oh, this is a good little key lock grip, but 10 seconds left, he's just going to have to settle for some heavy shoulder pressure here. Well, Reed's going to ride the, the round out, and it'll be interesting to see how carrying all that weight affects Aiton Depart as we head into the third frame, Josh. Yeah, because he wasn't just sitting there. He was trying to escape, but he wasn't able to, so that's going to suck his energy a little bit more. Um, but look, it was a good dominating round for Josh Reed in the end once he earned that takedown. Unquestionably, that's going to go his way on the judges' scorecard. Reed looking for that straight arm lock there from the half guard position, didn't get it. And this is the pass from the half guard straight into the full mount, slides the knee through beautifully. Yeah, there, and Josh. it was relatively easy because he did such good control up top. I mean, I would like to see him do it a little bit earlier, perhaps it needed. A warning from Mark Goddard to prompt him to progress that position. But you see here, as soon as the knee pops out, just glides it through. Very tough for Depap to stop that position. Well, they say slow and steady wins the race. Let's see if that's the case for Josh Reed here. And Reed's got a big Richter's grin on his face. <laughs> he can't wait to get back in there. Touch of gloves. I mean, that, that first round was very close, so I don't think either camp is going to be confident in saying their man got it. So for Josh Reed to get a, an almost definite round on the board is uh, is a big deal. And, you know, clearly they you know that game plan's worked because he shot and scored straight away. Beautiful work from Reed. Passes straight to side mount. <laughs> Heels to the ankle I've there from never, uh, eight never to the seen Yeah, heel kick to the calf. Uh, Depap's got to get some frames, he's got to get some arms inside. You can see that left arm is kind of isolated all the way out. Hit him behind the head there. He's got to try and recover that elbow position. Oh, there we go. This is, uh, there you go, arms back inside. He can do a bit more. We see, there you go, Susie Bridges. Great work from Aiden Depap there. Sweeps into top position, and that's what we thought Reed might have been afraid of in the second round, and Depap yeah, clearly has... Oh, Reed went to pivot and try and trap the arm, maybe get an arm bar from the bottom, but he hooked his toes in the cage. Mark Goddard forced to uh, remove them for him, but here's the arm bar again. Not quite pivot. The Pat does a good job of squaring back up, getting the shoulders both back inside. He pushed his head into the cage there to remove any possible gap from Reed to get that arm. Yeah, I mean, Over the top. It, it's all about center lines here. You see, the Pap needs to square up with him. He needs to get the center of his body in line with the center of his body. And when they're that close to the cage, it's harder to do for him. Couple of oh, big elbows. Oh, 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 oh. from Reed. Reed takes top position. 
used that shoulder lock to sweep very nicely. You see, Depap knew he was in trouble. He had no choice but to forward roll. And at least he's managed to recover to a better position here. Reed doesn't have the cage to worry about this time. That might give him a little bit more room if he's looking for that head and arm choke. Yeah, Depap has to has to work though. Reed can't really hit head and arm from here, stuck inside the guard. He's got to at least progress the position. Work, guys. Stay busy, please. Yeah, the ref's warning him he's got to work because you don't want to waste uh, a couple of minutes sitting here unless you're Josh Reed, perhaps. Uh, almost a look of frustration there from Depap as he shrugged his shoulders to Mark Goddard. That's not going to earn him any favours, but he's looking to just hold the arms here of Reed and perhaps looking for the stand up. Some nice yeah. elbows to the top of the head from the Belgian. It's a lot of time to, to waste to look for a stand-up, so he's got to start striking, as you see. He's got to open his guard and attack, but at the very least, he's got to frame on the face and try and, and kick Reed off to get back to his feet, because he can't languish here. I saw coach Richard Shaw in the corner there, calling for the elbows from Reed. Good work to push Reed away, but the crazy horse jumps right back into that half guard position yeah and that right arm here is key you see the shoulder pressure he's able to put on the pap as he marches it looks to march his way up the body now he's connected the hands again you see the shoulder turns in general rule here you force your opponent's head one way they're going to have to turn that way and that's not what the pap wants he wants to be able to turn to his left and if reed can knock another minute off the clock here he's going to be on the home stretch yeah, I think this is a, a good game plan change from Reed, but he's been swept again. Brilliant stuff from Aiton the Pop. Yeah, it's tough to see how that actually came about, but the Pap's got a minute 30 to work here, and I think we need to see him get some posture. He's going to stand up to his feet if he can get his head up. I mean, you can see that's why Reed's controlling the head and trying to pull him back down. He needs to maintain postural control here. If the Pap gets his head up, he's going to stand, he's going to start throwing shots and putting a lot of pressure on Josh Reed. We can end up with another very close round here, Josh. Really We've seen two sweep from the Pap, two takedowns from Reed. Yeah, but the, the Pap needs some damage here. He needs to get on his feet, he needs to start landing strikes. We've seen him land elbows from this position earlier in the fight. Um, it's a curious decision from there to accept back in the close guard. Big hammer fist there from the Belgian. Looking for an opening, but after such a grueling contest, how much has he got back in the tank to get up and engage in another stand-up war? That's it, because, you know, that second round, he had to do so much defending, that was going to suck a lot of energy. You know, the sweeps were beautifully timed, but it still takes energy, still takes cardio to keep going this deep. Hammer fist to the body. Looking to punch his way through the guard of Reed. Reed throwing strikes from his back, but nothing that's going to change the momentum of the fight in any way. I think Josh Reed might nick this in these last two rounds, you know. I know this is a close round, but I think Reed's just had the slightly better of it. Final seconds of the bout. Well, which way is this one going to go? Another tough one for our judges to pick out, Josh. It's a draw on our hands, maybe? It's difficult to say. I think I'm with you in that possibly think that Reed edged it in the third round clearly took the second yeah this was the takedown beautiful short left and you see wrapped up both legs so quickly at that point the pap couldn't split his base and, and get anything underneath him yeah you could give Reed all three rounds there and it's still a very close contest this was a beautiful sweep or reversal should I say as soon as he got that underhook he knew he had to bridge and roll yeah let's take a look at the uh, the shoulder lock here you can see Reed spins him, and the Pap voluntarily rolls quickly. He knows he has to to protect that shoulder. And a beautiful sweep from Josh Reed. Reed just on top position here, and the Pap explodes out from underneath. It looked like they were frozen <laughs> in time for a moment there. That was just a beautifully timed, powerful bridge. And you know that that kind of grappler is hard to hold down. You can see why Josh Reed was perhaps a bit more cautious in that second round now. Well, an interesting one for our judges to pick apart, but that's what they're paid for, and that's what they've done. And in just a moment's time, we will go to our MC, Mr. Hal Chaplin, and he will make the judges' decision official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. 
where all three judges score this bow 29 28 in favor of your winner by way of unanimous decision in the red corner josh crazy horse reed as we expected josh reed takes the decision he joins my broadcast colleague mr josh palmer I'm here with our winner, Josh Reed. Josh, how are you feeling after that one? Awesome. Can I just say something very quick? That fight was dedicated to uh, Amy and uh, Elliot Warlow, and they lost their daughter to the sepsis. I've uh, been a reason of awareness for it as well, and that wins for them. Well, best wishes to them. Talk us, uh, talk us through that fight, because it was quite a, a different sort of um, tact through those rounds. Second round, bit of a change of pace, you decided to take it to the ground. Yeah, 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 I, uh, I could see over at his stool, he was getting a little tired. Um, so I thought, oh, we'll get a takedown here, sit on top, smother him. I thought he would have break a little bit easier than that, but he's a tough guy, I've, I've been watching him, he's, he's good, so his record, you know, is very good, so it shows he's no bum, so I'm happy with the win. It, it seemed like quite a lot of the time you had to focus on maintaining position because particularly into the third round, some of his bridges were, were very explosive. Yeah, and he, he was strong on the, on the underhook and turning as well, but I've been working flat out with uh, Ash Amos, who's a very high-level grappler, and uh, I've been working non-stop with him now for 12 months. And, you know, I showed a little bit. In my last fight in March, I got a sub by Elok. You know, he's bringing my game on, so happy days. Is this, uh, is this looking for you to start moving forward again, rebuilding the career a little bit? Yeah, that's two wins on a bounce now. I'll uh, have a big fight towards the end of the year. I'm back on track now, and I'll be where I want to be. Let's just, uh, I'll let you go and celebrate in a second, but one, one final word. Uh, you've got a couple of teammates coming up on the, the main card later. Thoughts and predictions? Uh, Dez will win. He's game, he's ready, he's hungry, and uh, no, one's uh, no one's touching Tank, so he'll walk through him alone like no tomorrow. You'll see it live here now. Main event coming up later, but we'll let you go celebrate now. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for your winner, Josh Reed. Well, he had something of a rough patch last year, but Josh Crazy Horse Reed has now put together two wins in a row, and he's going to look to climb up the Cage Warriors advancing weight ladder.